Okay everyone, this is my uh, SSG, I guess you'd call it now, um, with my new rotor on there, Stata. I'm trying out, it's got eight poles on there, and they're in a scalar north configuration, so sharp north, um, with the two mangots pushed together. It's got it sitting on that bearing at the moment, just freely sitting there spinning, because it's heavy enough to, well, there's a bit of double-sided tape underneath where it sits, but... It's all temporary at the moment, that's why there's heaps of tape around it. The magnets aren't glued in yet. It's actually going into a bigger device. I'm just was seeing if originally it would work. This is one of my old coils. It's not very efficient because look at the core. <laughs> there's a massive gap around it. But I don't have a one inch thick bit of rod, so. And I'm using the old 3055 type transistor, which is a bit slower than the MJL I was using. I have been using, but use them all up at the moment and my the only one I've got is burnt out so there you go this particular one draws about 400 milliamps with these magnets um, the neos draw about 500 milliamps is the best I can get it at but once see that was with a different coil that was with, uh, with this coil here which is much smaller in comparison so, can't really compare them, I guess. It's a battery, I'm just sort of charging at the moment. It's my scope. That's the uh, waveform. If I adjust the intensity, you can see the spikes at the top coming out, the radiant spikes. So, I tested this setup with, uh, with this capacitor. That's an AC capacitor, 400 volt. Um, what does it say? 5.6 microfarads. So, the 220 volt spikes I'm getting off that, which is pretty good. And this is connected, this is connected to this battery here, which I've just drained using an inverter and, a, and that light. <laughs> Down to really flat, a lot lower than I normally would have. Um, while it was draining it went down to 7.9 volts, so I never normally would do that, but I just want to see what would happen curiosity I guess. In case everyone's wondering this is what the bearing I'm using looks like. It's out of an old uh, 5 inch floppy drive. You know the really old ones. <laughs> it's actually a really good bearing. Designed to run at high speed for long periods of time. It's all aluminium so nothing magnetic about it which is good. So what I'm going to do now is take this battery I have another light connected to it just to help matters. Before I do anything, I'll just make sure this is drained. There we go. That's a small 150 watt inverter I bought, 40 bucks. That there is a big 1500 watt inverter I got off eBay for about 214 bucks. Normally they're a thousand or so dollars Australian, but I got it there and I thought, yeah, there might be something wrong with it, but it's been perfect. Gives me a voltage readout on the batteries, everything. It's great. Best bargain, I reckon. Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, I'll hook up the multimeter to this battery. So that we can see as it spikes, by the way. I would never normally leave this. And that's when I reduce it ten times down. You can see how high they are. Compared to uh, to normal, I'll just connect it up again. It's normal. There's spikes, so they're quite big. So I'll get the multimeter up here so we can see when I connect it what we look, what sort of voltages we're getting. So you all saw before 11.22 when I do that now. Okay. This battery is the most conditioned one I have. As soon as I connected it, 12.27, 11.27, sorry. So we'll watch this for a little bit. Go up reasonably quickly. Got to remember, this is just the most basic form of the circuitry you can have. The biggest charger I built so far has eight circuits. Um, yeah, and it it charges car batteries real quick once they work conditioned. The, my granddad's borrowing that and he's uh, 
had a lot of success with his very he's got an RV, lots of battery banks. So he's conditioning those and getting them back up to standard because they're all a bit sulfated, so lend that to him. So this will climb pretty quickly and this battery I've timed it will be go from dead flat like this to fully charged in about two hours. And this is a 12 volt 7.0 amp hour battery, so it's nothing huge, it's just it's just a small little one to sort of try things out with. Um, so now a bit more on the multimeter, sorry on the oscilloscope. This is, I noticed everyone on the forum is posting their results, Sephiroth just got his, looks very nice. Um, let's move that around, I don't, that's a zero mark there. So that's 20, 24 volts, that's the 12 mark. So the little tiny spikes coming off, escaping are about um, 30 volt mark above. So the settings I've got this on, one millisecond intervals and five volt division. So if I move that around a bit, there we go. You can see they're just at about the two millisecond marks, which means that this rotor is spinning at about 3700 RPM ish. Because I've got that. Eight eight poles on there and each one of those is its pulse so it's a calculator. I'll work it out later what the frequency is. It's about um oh here it is. <laughs> okay so what's that it's thousand divided by two times sixty uh, oh no, I don't mind that. So it's 500 hertz basically. If I got that wrong, someone can post a comment <laughs> and correct me. So you're up to 12.10 or 1 or 0 already. This will climb up pretty quick. And uh, see, when this device was first built, not with that rotor, another one, but I could barely charge this battery, and after umpteen cycles, probably about 20 or 30 cycles, it just charges like a champ now. It's great. So that's just climbing through. A lot of people I notice are scrimmaging and deviating from the original schematic. I haven't done a thing. I've experimented, and I'll do that, but when I build my decent sized chargers, and I've only built the one so far, <laughs> but I'm building a much bigger one. This wheel is going into a into a charger which will have 20 circuits on it. See if I can do some decent sized batteries with it, you know, 200 amp hour plus, just to see what I can do. It's all the original schematic, nothing changed except a couple of resistors, you know, just to tune it up. I found that has given me the best results so far. The only modification from the schematic I have is I use multiple diodes on the output. Four or five. This one has six, but normally four or five from my other one I used. And the different transistor, that's it. Everything else is identical, and I am having really good results with it. Um, this car battery here with my 8 circuit charger. 6 hours it's charged and it's not even conditioned and it's sulfated. It doesn't hold for too long, it'll light a 100 watt light bulb for about 25 minutes. And this is a 57 amp hour battery, so it should do it for a lot longer than that. But it's sulfated so I've got it for free so I'm not complaining. <laughs> this is just really climbing up now. Uh, I have to pause here for a sec because we're at the 9 minute 40 mark. YouTube's only 10 minutes I think. So I'll come back in a sec when it's climbed up 